I'm very happy to coming here in the Sacramento and especially in the United States, US. After so many years, because of COVID, I got stuck in my monastery in Nepal. So it's really, for me, it's uh, like a vacation. <laughs> Very nice vacation. Dharma vacation. <laughs> like Dharma vacation. So, and so happy to see you all. And uh, today, the session. So, we are having about the uh, six yogas of Naropa and the session in the between uh, middle of the session we will have the break for some time yeah uh, because sometimes that uh, when the sessions goes very long the students and the masters both will get tired <laughs> so Let me tell you the one story. They, they, there is a one master, and uh, he gives the teaching hours and hours with closing the eye. He don't look at the listeners whether they are getting tired or they are losing the attention. He keeps on the talk and talk and give the teaching, teaching hours and hours. So one evening. He was giving a teaching in the temple. While he was giving the teaching, several hours with closing the, his eye. After the several hours later, he stopped the, his teaching and the, he just opened the, his eye. He saw only one student in front of the him. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I see. Okay, come on then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, I was when he saw the only one student in front of the him. So, it's okay. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Huh? So, then he told that student. You are extraordinary student. You have a very strong Dharma seed in your heart. In my whole life, whenever I get teaching, when I open the, uh, my eye, no one, no student will be front of me. They all will leave. But you are the only one who can listen the whole my sessions, hours and hours. So you might have the very strong Dharma seat in your heart. You are the extraordinary student. The student told the master, actually, it's not like that. I am caretaker of the, this temple. After you left, I have to close the door. So, so I was just waiting for you to leave the temple, then I can close the door. <laughs> so that's why today, the, if I, the sessions go very long, so only the caretaker of the, this temple will be here. <laughs> so, so between the session, we'll have the break, okay? The break, 30 minutes break, yeah. Okay, so... Now the six Naropa Yoga, because actually this considers, this teaching considers as a very secret. But for me, most of the secret teaching, I want to teach in the public. Traditionally, these all secret teachings master to the only few students. But I'm doing very different. I want to bring it to the public. What the reason that I want to bring in the public is that Quite a long time back, I was giving a one secret teaching called the consciousness transference, which comes in the six Naropa Yoga. Some student came and they told me that they are practicing it. So I told him, how did you get the teaching? 
So they told me they read the books in the internet. Wow. Oh, then I asked the steps. They are going very wrong step they're practicing. So if I don't teach in the practice, I'm sure that you will get the thousands of the information in the Google. So you might get the many wrong information about this practice. So that's why not to get the misunderstand of the big practices. So that's why I bring it to you very public and the very open. I want to teach the very, I mean, the, to teach to the public. Okay, so now the six Naropa yoga, six, um, six. So what are the six yogas? Is that the first it's called the yoga of the dream. Yoga of the dream, yoga of the consciousness transference, yoga of the pardo, yoga of the intermediate state, and the yoga of the illu, uh, illusionary body, yoga of the inner heat, Yoga of the clear light, okay, six. I'm not so sure that at this time I can cover the whole, the six, but I will cover one or two points and that, that you will get the very clear understanding of the these practices. The, among the six Naropa Yoga, first practice is uh, called the practice or the yoga of dream. That means the practice of the dream or you can call it the dream yoga. Now, here comes the question, what is the purpose of the dream yoga? What is purpose of the practice of the dream? The purpose of the dream yoga is that, okay? Let me ask you the one question. I'm sure you dream, no? Dream, yeah. So when you dream, the question is that in the state of the dream, it is possible you to travel other state, other country. It may sound a little bit of the crazy or a little bit of the fancy, okay? Are you getting my question? In the state of the dream, is there any possibility to travel into other place? Okay, what I did is that I did the research. Research with in the Taiwan around the 200 students when I'm teaching the dream yoga. In that state, I told them that try to travel in the state of the dream. Try to travel in the state of dream and at that time you have to travel and come into my room that we are having the retreat place come into my room and I kept something under the, my table try to see that are you getting my point no so then we will know that the really he can travel in the state of the dream or not are you getting my point the research okay but the thing is that I openly tell the whole the student whenever I teach this, I never practice the dream yoga. I never practice this, the dream practice because I want to sleep very well. Whenever you are practicing in the state of the dream, you could not sleep well. I can assure you that. But still, you have to walk while you are sleeping, no? Still, you have to practice while you are sleeping. I want to sleep very well. I want. I need a very eight hours sleep. So that okay. Anyway, so that is a research one we did, and more detail I will tell you that. Now, the theoretically practice of the dream yoga is that in the state of the dream to travel to the Buddha's pure land and to receive the teaching from the Buddha. So this is the, what the, I did the research with the student is a very interesting thing is that the, some in the, among the 200 students trying to do the only one of student can travel. But travel means a not the very, not like a traveling, like a how we travel in the normal life. At least 
they can they can have the lucid dream, no? Lucid dream, and the, they are coming. But at that time, they didn't come to the my room in the Taiwan. They travel to the place in the South India, the my place. They go the wrong direction. But whatever, but the whatever the experience they told me quite similar at the in the my South India. Some they talks about the trees. So they never been to the my house in the South India. Okay, okay. But yeah, I think also Jules tried that, isn't it? One time she tried that. That, that whole experience, maybe you can ask her. Okay, <laughs> okay. So this is the purpose. Okay. Now here that the few steps are there to have the lucid dream. There are the few steps. Okay. So now. In the first thing is that the, here we have to understand the one thing. One thing is about that the, in the what is the dream? Before starting the dream yoga, dream practice, what is the dream? What is the happening in the dream? When you are dreaming, actually these all image, image comes into your mind or you are traveling to the some other place so from here in the in the vajrayana we say in the state of the dream you travel with the dream body that's called the dream body right now we are having the physical body in the state of the dream we are having the dream body so that's why this one student told me that there is a movie regarding about uh, this theory. So, inception, no? But I tried to watch it only a few minutes, then I could not watch it because I don't watch the fiction movies at all. So some student told me, yeah, there are the similarity ideas in that movie, whatever. So in the state of the dream, you are having the dream body, that dream body, with that dream body, you can travel. So, what what the way how the you what is the steps you have to learn to have to travel in the state of the dream so there are the few steps you should know that before when you go to the bed before when you go to the bed you just have to focus syllable isn't it syllable a uh, or whom on your forehead or on your Thought okay, celebrate uh, or whom visualize that and then go to bed. That will help you to have the clear dream. Here it's a very important that you should have the clear dream. What is the definition of the clear dream? Clear dream means that the once you wake up, once you when you can remember your dream, that's called the clear dream. Sometimes you will dream a lot, but morning once you wake up you will remember nothing. So to have the clear dream, before you go to bed, you visualize the syllabus ah, or whom on your throat or on your forehead. First step. Am I clear? Okay, that you have to do, okay? While you are practicing, it disturbs your sleep. I'm not a responsible, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so that is the first step. Now the second step is that the when you are dreaming, you should aware that you are dreaming. Once you are not aware that you are dreaming, then you cannot travel. So that's why the to aware that you are dreaming in the daytime, you have to remind yourself or you have to visualize that or you might, you should have to think that you are dreaming, 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 okay? Even when you are awake, think that you are dreaming or it's all like a dream. It's all like a dream. That you have to daytime, you have the thing again and again. Then at the, in the nighttime, when you dream, then immediately you will, you can generate that awareness or you will aware that you are dreaming in the state of the dream, okay? Am I clear? Yeah. So that is the second step, okay? Now, the most important is a third step. Third step, okay. When you are aware that you are dreaming, what you have to do, then you have to think to travel, okay? Travel to the Buddha's pure land or the travel to the 
I mean, the place where have you have not been like Mount Everest. I'm sure that you have not seen the Mount Everest. No? Even I was born in Nepal. I'm from Nepal, but I have not seen the Mount Everest. So you just have to, at that time, when you realize that you are dreaming, then you start to travel to the Mount Everest. When you travel to the mountains, whatever you see, just write it down, then look in the Google. See that whether all those the descriptions are matching or not. If it's matching, that shows now you are very, you've been to the very close to the Mount Everest. So that is the, that is the most difficult spot. One time, there is one temple and they are having the prayer session. In the prayer session, one of the small kid monk fall asleep. Then the old master saw him sleeping. Then the old master scolded that small kid. That small kid monk told him that you cannot sleep in the puja. You should be very serious and to focus on the prayer. You cannot sleep. The next day in the prayer session, the old master fall asleep. Then the small kid monk told the old master, wow, you're sleeping. You should be very serious. You should focus on the prayer. Then the old master told him that, oh, you are very innocent. Actually, you looks like I'm sleeping. Actually, I'm not sleeping. In the state of, I'm practicing the dream yoga. I'm in the state of the dream. I'm going to the Buddha's pure land to receive the teaching from the Buddha. Yeah, he said that. So next day, again, the small kid, he fall asleep. Then the old master told him that you, could, you should not sleep in the prayer. You should be very serious, focus on the prayer. Then the small kid monk told exactly the same as that old master. He told you, you seems like I'm sleeping. I'm not sleeping. I'm practicing the dream yoga. I've been to the Buddha's pure land. I am went to, to receive the teaching. In the middle of the teaching, you wake me up. So master, the old master told that the small kid, okay, if you went to the Buddha's pure land to receive the Buddha's teaching, what did the Buddha say to you? So then the small kid told that old master, in the state of the dream, when I'm practicing dream yoga, I went to the Buddha's pure land. Then I asked the one question to Buddha, do my master visit here? Buddha told me that, the, who is your master? I don't know your master. He never comes here. <laughs> Okay, so, so this is the said, okay. So now it is a very easy to claim that the, in the state of the dream, you seize the Buddha. In the state of the dream, it's very easy to tell you that you've been to the Buddha's pure land. It's very easy. But in the state of the dream, if you travel and come to the Mount Everest, then it is not that easy to say whether then... When in the state of the dream, if you travel to my monastery in Nepal, you have not, many of you have not seen my monastery, yeah? So in, in you came to my monastery in the state of the dream, whatever you see, write it down. Then look whether it's matching or, if it's matching, that means you came very close to my monastery. Okay. So that is the purpose. Okay, dream yoga, the purpose. Okay. So that's what the third thing is. One thing, very important thing is that in my own experience, when you think to travel, you should not, you should not uh, pressurize too much for the yourself. When you are mentally pressurized too much for the yourself, you will get awake. It happened me with me the few times when I realized that I'm dreaming. I just thought to go somewhere to meet the, my student. So some other country. When I trying to pressurize myself and the, yeah. So then what it happened is it wakes me up from the dream. So that's why you should not do that. When you realize that you are dreaming, just you 
think that now you have to travel to the certain place. Okay? So that is the third step what you have to do. Okay? Now, these are the practices. It's a not that easy. Because last one year back, one year back, we have the small group, around 30 students. I just started with the research of the dream yoga. But most of the cases, most difficult thing is that lots of the students, they said they never dream. When they fall asleep, never dream. Only dreams are once in the two week or once in the two weeks. While they dream, it's a dream duration, it's a very short. So they are not aware that they are dreaming. So it is not that. So my advice, my advice is if you really want to practice the dream yoga, don't take my advice very seriously, okay? Sleep more. <laughs> Sleep more. <laughs> more chance to have the dream, okay? <laughs> Don't take that seriously, okay? So this is the only solution. Once you know the dream, there's no way of the practicing the dream yoga at all. To dream what you had, what you have to do, you have to sleep. You have to fall asleep. If you don't fall asleep, you, can, you will never have a dream, no? Yeah, that is, you got it. No, these are the practice and the steps how you have to practice the dream yoga, okay? This is the steps. Now, now comes to the points, other points. Now, in the dream yoga, what I told about the dream body, dream body, no? You have heard about the, that, uh, what I told, dream body. Now, normally, right now, we are having a physical body. In the state of the dream, we will have the dream body. Dream body. Now, the actually, what does the dream body mean? What is the dream body means? So the, let me give you the one example. Do you have the certain dreams? Certain dreams which comes true later. Do you have a such a kind of the dreams which comes, which appear the true after the sometime later? Did you dream something which is going to happen in the future? Do you have that experience? Huh? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, some many people used to have it, many people might not. Okay. So, like this cases. Like these cases, we have to know that the like these cases, the how it happens, how it happens, no? Like a like a Sigmund Front, he wrote the book, Dream Analysis. If I'm not mistaken, the name, no, Dream as a hero. He paid too much importance for the older dreams. He feels that the older dreams have the meaning. All the dreams have some meaning. From here, this from this practice point of view, some dreams might have the meaning, some dreams might not. Some dreams have the meaning, some now the my experience with the especially people in the last stage peoples. Are you all getting my point? No, the last stage, what I mean is uh, some people who they who are in the stage where they have a no curable for the dear disease. So my special the interest with them is that, that I always ask them that uh, what kind of the dreams you used to have it. It's a very interesting thing is that with my questioning with the, these people, they are the one similarity I can see that one similarity. One similarity is that the, maybe you can if you are not very uncomfortable with the talk like this and the person who want to share, maybe you can check with them or the people like that state, no? And uh, what they're having the mostly these cases, the dream is the like a red flowers, red uh, house with the red curtain, people with the red hair. So red color seems a very, I mean, the common in the, these people having the some dreams. Are you getting my point? So in the dream yoga, in this practice, it called that the, whenever you see the red flowers, the mention is a, not a good sign and a good dream. So people whom I talk with the people at the, 
any of the people who who having the such a disease at the last stage these people my interest is that i'm asking them that do you sleep well do you dream so most of the year they're having the some dreams which related mostly with the rat that color okay i'm not rat color so you can check on the see okay so still i don't know the reason that why they are having this similar similar dream that i have no answer for it right now just want to share some of my experience okay that is the thing now now the here okay now the other thing is that the, in the dream yoga the practice is a number one okay now the second practice the second practice here comes with the six narupa yoga no the first is dream yoga now the second comes the consciousness transference consciousness transference practice is the very simple way when you are dying you are just transferring the your consciousness from this body to the straight to the buddha's pure land does it make any sense hmm does it make sense good if it doesn't make sense also good okay <laughs> one time i'm I, i had a live radio show in the oregon couple of the years back and the person asked me the very interesting question he asked me that the, you are rinpoche you are the eighth reincarnation and the, he asked me that the, he want to born next life in italy can i give him the some advice how can he rebirth take a rebirth in italy <laughs> nice question he asked me so consciousness transfer in the second practice is a practice of that how you can transfer the your consciousness from this body to the uh, buddha's pure to this the consciousness transfer in practice it will take around the seven days every day you might have to practice the six to eight hours okay in the future we will see that practice okay if you're interested okay that i need to be your for the seven days nearby you it may turn your the whole the body immune system upside down because i teach that two times in the vietnam with the student or two three hundred students who join for that the program so some students they will vomit some student they will lose like whole the energy some student they will feel like a very high like a taking the drug different experience but the, at the end of the seven days then we will see that the, whether he succeeded the practice or not okay the, okay now the point is that the how you can practice the consciousness transfer as this practice first before that first we have to understand that the one thing when the when the normal people dies die their consciousness leaves the body and the leaves the body and the, if you notice that the people after the death if you touch the body any part of the body you will not feel any heat on body they will lose the heat but the, if you touch the center of the body you can feel the warmness this is a point number 1 number 2 is that the, if the person dies and after 20 to 30 minutes later you will see that some of the liquids will come from the the person's the crown no what do you call that crown isn't it crown yeah so these are the now my question is that when the consciousness leaves the our body if the consciousness leaves our body from the our crown that means that the consciousness can take a better rebirth am i Okay. Okay. Now here, that the, what you can do is so you can touch on your crown, and the, can you see that crown part, little bit hollow part on it? Can you see that? Can you see? No, sorry. Can you feel that? Feel that? No. Now, in there is a very strong energy point. Energy point. Energy point, and the while you meditate. sometimes that you will feel sensations on that part warm sensation not in the other part of the head why do you feel that a warm sensation on that part is this is the way the energy point so that's why the consciousness transfer and practice is the true force your consciousness 
to leave your body from the crone and they go straight to the Buddha's pure land. Do you get the theory, no? For that, now for that, there are the two practices there. Today I will teach you the basic, then the advanced, maybe I told you it may take the seven days with the practice, okay? Basic teaching, the basic practice on here is that the what you have to meditate is that, okay? What you have to do is from you have, there is a center, we call the center channel. Center channel means it comes from the your crown, up in your crown, and they go straight up till the your private part, okay? That called the center channel. That central channel color is the white color central channel, okay? What you have to do is uh, every day, just do the five minutes to 10 minutes, just visualize that the day is a white central channel in your body and uh, it's get bigger and bigger and bigger. Am I clear? With this practice, in the, within the two or three weeks, I hope that the, you are the memories and the dream, especially with the related with the dreams, no? you will have in the more clear dream, it will help you. Okay, um, are you getting my point? No. So what you have to do is that you know every day, okay? But then never think that the channel is shrinking, okay? Don't think the channel is getting shrinking. Always you have to visualize that channel is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, at last stage, you have to visualize that you are that inside of the dead white channel. Am I clear? I always tell the one story whenever I give the teaching. One of the, my favorite story, okay? I think that you have heard that several years back. Or you may forget that story. So I will repeat that story, okay? <laughs> there is uh, one person who came to the master, asked him to the meditate, uh, teach him the meditation. So master told him that uh, you can meditate whatever you like. Whatever you like, you can think whatever you like. But the thing is that, important thing is that, you should not think about the monkey. You meditate whatever you like, think whatever you like, don't think monkey. Student feel first initially, he feel it's a very easy and a very simple. Then he start to meditate. Whenever he start to meditate, now you know the what comes in his mind. <laughs> so I just remember when I told you not to think that the shrinking that channel, no, don't think that the channel is getting smaller. So it might disturb your okay meditation session, okay. <laughs> so that's why I always used to tell the joke that when the God told the Adam and Eve not to eat the apple, no. So I <laughs> thought to eat the apple. If that time God told the Adam and Eve you must eat the apple, definitely they will not eat the apple. <laughs> so okay. So yeah, so that's why the not to think the uh, not to think about the monkey makes it very difficult to meditate. So so here that the now uh, that the, every day you can meditate the five minutes like that. Okay, just white channels. Okay, getting bigger and bigger. Okay, that bigger, and the, it may also help you to observe the energy, positive energy. Okay, energy observe the positive energy more strongly. Okay, so. Have you ever had the experience? Sometime when you reach a certain place, suddenly you might have the dizziness or headache or like that. You have that experience, no? So that is, a, you can purify the, your energy. Purify the energy. The term in the energy, energy term in the, traditionally they will use the different term used at the, uh, wind or something like that okay wind wind okay but the, i will never use that term the wind i will use the energy because the wind traditionally term wind the function is exactly same as the energy so that's why the lots of the teaching when do you listen from the interpreter you will list, miss the lot of the meanings of the teaching so because the interpreter they will only focus on the terms and the word they will not focus on the meaning because I have the experience of the lot of different interpreters. So sometimes the, inter sorry for the, yeah, inter sorry, jumping out of the topic. I want to tell you the one story of the, yeah, one of the, my interpreter. So now when I'm having the different interpreter, 
Some interpreter, if I speak the two minutes, interpreter go to five to 10 minutes, their interpretation. Interpreter, no translator, they will talk to 10 to 10 minutes. Sometimes some interpreters or some translator, when I give the teaching 10 minutes, for them only for three minutes it takes. Then I ask him the, how come I give the 10 minute teaching? Peter translator told me, I pick up the only the main points. <laughs> so this is the, okay, this is the well, one, one good thing is that when you can understand the English, I think that you can get the, I mean, the, when you get the direct, I mean, the teaching in the English, that is the best. Because otherwise the translator missed a lot of the point, a lot of the point. So sometimes that uh, whenever I give the teaching in the different language, sometimes I ask the translator, tell me back what I told. I check the translator. So that's why the most of them I translate the different language. They are working with more than 10 years, 12 years. So that's why I don't change my translator. That is a very risky job. Whenever I change the translator, they don't understand the, my thinking. They don't understand the, my accent. So that makes the very, I mean, the, they, will, they will pass the very wrong message to the student. Okay. So that's why the, I use the term the energy, okay? But the, if some translator, definitely they will use the term as a wind, okay? Then it will not, it doesn't make any sense to you. Good wind, bad wind, does it make any sense? So they, we can say the positive energy, negative energy, but there's no positive wind in the positive negative wind. Okay, so you get, you get some my point, no? So now the thing is a consciousness transferring, that is the practice, what you have to do. Now, the second thing is that the consciousness transference. Consciousness transference, the thing is that while you are practicing the consciousness transference, practicing the consciousness transferring, practice what you are doing it. Important thing is that the practice of the consciousness transference is that the, at the state of the, at the time of the death, that you can transfer the, your consciousness from this world to the Buddha's, the pure land. Okay? You're getting my point, no? For this, for this, the first important thing is that we have to understand the one thing. Is there any possibilities? Is there any possibilities that before dying, can we transfer the, our consciousness from the, this place to the Buddha's pure land? Are you getting my question? Not at the time of the death, before that. A few months back, a few months back, I was talking with the, one of the, my students that's in the Nepal. He was telling me that the, after the science development, if we can evade the death, if we can live without the dying, if we can live without dying, what you call the immortal, isn't it? If we are having the immortal life, Rinpoche, what do you think? People will get the interest in the practicing the Dharma? So I told if we can if we can live with the life without dying, immortal life, definitely a lot of people will choose the death. Because right now we don't have the option. If you have the option, some people might get very bored with the living two, three hundred years, no? So now the back to the, my point, whether is there any possibilities to transfer the, our consciousness right now from the, this life to the Buddha's pure land right now. So for very honest with you, for me, I have no, I have no idea. Because you know, if you ask this question to the old master, definitely they will answer something because they don't have to prove it, no? Because the, every of the spiritual master, easiest thing is that whatever they teach, they don't have to prove. They don't need to prove it. So that's why the, I'm not that, because I really provide you the very, very right information. So that's why there's no idea with it. From theoretically, at the time of the death, because you have the no choice, you have to leave the body. So consciousness transfer and practice it to help to transfer your consciousness from the, this world to the Buddha's pure land. Okay, who are the very interested in practicing that? We will make the, some program in the next time, okay? That will take the at least the six to eight hours, the daily practice for the one week. 
still no guarantee you will succeed or not okay when you are successful there are the still symptoms of the very success is that the, you might on your crown the liquids will start to come but you still you are not diet okay still you are not diet. liquid will come or the you will vomit a lot or even the some cases you might observe the hole in the on your crown you will observe it okay and the few days later you will get recovered okay am i clear okay that will that will happen so okay the, when you are success in that consciousness transfer and practice okay the pro, okay that is the okay then third one okay and uh, now we finish the two say, two points no dream yoga and uh, consciousness transference no the practice now the consciousness transference so i will not talk about uh, what is consciousness and what is a mind no this is the very different topic so what is a mind and what is a consciousness this is a very different topic but the one thing i want to touch with is one small thing when you look at our body cell do the body cell are conscious do they have the consciousness are you getting my question hmm whatever you answer very fine okay i don't <laughs> why i raised this question is that recently years back i have i can't say that invented i mix up the some meditation and the bring the one meditation program 40 minutes meditation i mix up the two or three different meditation 40 minutes and uh, you have to practice for the six weeks that practice i just pick up the small group of the people with that small group of the people before starting the meditation they have to do the blood test see that uh, they are the level of the body immune system after the six week later then again they did the blood test and uh, see the how that meditations affect them what we find it out the very interesting thing is that it helped them to improve the body immune system bring some people who are not at the normal after the six weeks later it came back to the normal with a small group now i'm doing planning to do with a mass 200 people so for that i have to apply for the what do you call that ir irb isn't it institutional reviewing the board no irb that's a doctor's some term okay i'm not very good at these old terms so i'm applying for that and the last time when i was in new york i talked with the doctors to do the research to get the certification for the my research okay so here the point is that the point is that the, my point is that so from that main theory of the that of the practice is that the, i feel that the body cells can receive the message when you are when you when you are communicating we communicate each other we lang, use the language you can talk with your body cell it sounds a little bit crazy okay because it's a very different from the ancient the i mean the ancient the buddhist i mean the system okay ancient the buddhist system if i if you ask the any of the buddhist ancient i mean the ancient system tibetan tibetan buddhist master if you ask the body cell do they have the consciousness their answer will be no i was teaching a philosophy in the saraje monastery several years i know the exactly what the philosophy system says but uh, my research is something very different i'm going as the buddha said when you find the reality and the truth is more important than the his word so that's why i always tell i'm the crazy master so that's why i do the my research is going very different direction for the 100 years the what the, the pattern of masters are saying no does it make any sense but the what my okay this is just my hypothesis okay right now i'm not proven the body cells can they can receive our message so why i decided to do it is a reason is that the, when i see a lot of the sick people i really want to help them not just going for the prayers bring the such a effective meditation to help them to recover 
Last, I mean, the last year I was dealing with the two students, last stage of the cancer. Doctor told there's no medication for them, just have to have the vitamin. Still, one is here in the Sacramento, I think so, isn't it? One is in the Washington, DC. When I'm seeing them, I really want to help them do something, not just say the prayer and the leave everything is a Buddha's hand. I want to do something. So that's why the, I'm just thinking this invent in this meditation. So really activate, you know the, how the body cancer, the disease, no? When the cell started to grow without any reason. So is there any particular meditation? Can we bring something to help this to cell to behave or to work very properly? This is the, my intention. You're getting my intention, no? So that's why the what I bring this meditation, okay? Anyway, sorry to jump out of the little bit of out of the topic, okay? But from this is the, if we, so my point is this meditation sessions and everything, if it really goes very well, I want to bring it to the freely to the everyone. That's my intention, free to the everyone. I always say that Buddhism should be the free. That because the Buddhism, when the Buddha preached the Buddhism, he gave them freely. He, he said the Buddhism Dharma is like a medicine. Should everyone have it freely? So that's my intention. Okay. Okay. So now back to the point the consciousness transference is that, that consciousness. Okay. What is a consciousness? It comes that consciousness from it saying the mind, mind consciousness. So now that, okay. So, so that's why the consciousness. Okay. So what will we do is uh, I will leave for the five minutes for the question and session, then we'll have the break. Okay. So do you have any questions regarding about the room yoga and the consciousness transfer in these two points? Yeah. Thank you, Rinpoche. Yeah. I was wondering what, when you were just talking about the um, meditation, um, changing the cells, um, there's these different phenomena like voodoo death, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of this before, but someone puts a spell on someone and that person then dies shortly afterward because they believe that they have this spell that was put on them or just the will to live. People often die soon after they decide that they don't want to live anymore. So that feels like the mind speaking to the body in some way. I wonder if that's relating to what you're talking about or have you heard of this before? The keeping the body, isn't it? So, sorry, you are saying that uh, about the keeping the body. That when the per uh, a person can um, die, mm -hmm. based on their, um, um, it's like their mind talking to their body, telling them to stop mm -hmm. living. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're ta you're telling me that the person talking with body after the death or. Before Be the death. Before death. There's there's you... a, something we call the will to live. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes people just stop wanting to live mm -hmm. and then their body dies. Mm -hmm. So that I wonder if that's similar to what you're talking about when, when you're saying that we can change our cells through our meditation, um, the communication between the mind and the body that way. Mm -hmm. if, if, if that's relating at all to what you're talking about. So... Yeah, so now the I got the whole your points, but uh, I still, uh, can you just clarify the word question? What's your main question now here? I mean, I was just fascinated by what you were talking about with the meditation. I see. Being yes. able to um, change the cells in the body. This feels like it's it's kind of an opposite direction. It's mm -hmm. not really a meditation. I don't know if the person potentially in the coma is, mm -hmm. is meditating uh, to die. I don't know. It just feels like maybe there's some. I'm just fascinated by what you're talking about, mm. and what, I'm trying to put connections together of okay. existing phenomena that we know about that that relates to what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Let me tell you the one thing. When these are the practices, what I talk, no. So one thing that these practices, especially like this meditation practices, thing is that the, like a, thing is that the one thing you should know that the, 
every of the meditation, whatever the meditation practice, whatever the meditation practice is, uh, the most difficult for the person to the meditate, most difficult thing is a person to the meditate is that I always tell the one thing, we call that the secret obstacle. Secret obstacle for meditators, okay? What is the secret obstacle for the meditator is the laziness, procrastinating, okay? So first thing is uh, when you like to meditate, but a few days you can carry on, then after some days later, you will get tired or bored. So normally people used to ask me that how many hours do I meditate? That's a very common question, you know, especially in America. How many hours do you meditate? So I, I used to tell them, really, I don't know that how many hours I meditate. For me, every moment is for meditating. Every moment. So when I'm talking with you, I'm just focusing. I'm being just generating the awareness that I'm talking with you. When I'm in the street, I'll generate the, that just trying to live in the present moment, no? Just trying to live in the present moment for me is that. When I have the circumstances, when I face the challenges, I will remind myself that, uh, wow, whatever the problem I'm having, may the all the sentient beings not have it. Whenever I'm having the happy moment, I always cherish these happy my moments. May the all the sentient beings get the, these happiness from me. For me, every moment is the time of the meditation. So I don't know how many minutes I meditate. So if you slowly, if you can come and reach the, that state, then the, you are the whole, the amanda. Amanda, you, are, you will find that you have a lot of times for the meditate. Because lots of people, they say, I have to go for the walk. I have to do this. So I have a not many time. I don't have the time for meditate. But every moment is for you to practice the Dharma. So you will have the 24 hours, except for me, eight hours that I don't meditate. I just sleep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, another question. Yeah. I'm, I'm very intrigued, very interested in the practice that you develop. I'm a student of Namkai Norbu Rinpoche, and he has the practice of Mandarava, which has breathing and also Chulen uh, involved in that practice. And uh, he, he was able to increase his lifetime using that practice so he could live longer. And so uh, when you talked about that, I was very interested because um, one of my very good teachers was able to do that. That's a question or no? Okay. 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 And it was it was a connection okay. to my belief that what you've accomplished is really possible. Okay. So okay. Oh. Rinpoche, can you hear me? I'm online, but can you hear me? In my readings on meditation there, I have noticed that sometimes there are meditations, because my understanding in Powa, uh, you, with the mantra, you shoot out the top of your head to go to the, go to the pure land when you're dying. But there also seems to be uh, Buddhist meditations where uh, you shoot the consciousness out, but not to die, but to, to become enlightened. So what is the difference uh, between the two? Um, it, am I correct in, in, in thinking there are Buddhist meditations that are similar to Powa uh, for death, but while staying alive, uh, the, the, the visualization is to go out the top of your head and meditate on emptiness. You understand? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand very well. Because what you're talking is my field. <laughs> that is, <laughs> okay. So, things is that, okay? 
in the right now when you are saying the Buddhist meditation, as I mentioned before, now they are bringing the lots of the meditation, especially in the market. Okay. Last, I mean the weeks back, no weeks. I mean the ten days back. I was in New York and I was invited with one family. So she have the one kid. I mean, the, I mean the few kids, but the main is the one kid. Doctors, I mean, they told that the whole kids having that dis mental disorder, no attention deficit, the mental disorder. So she so seems like she was quite a bit worried, and she don't want to start the medication treatment. So I told her the one thing. <clears throat> when I was kid, I was exactly like that kid. I have that mental disorder. Even I have it. Because right now, if you look at that mental disorder, now they are labeling a lot with the mental disorder. These, the, what they are labeling is the 2,500 years back. Buddha only to give this label. But the, he labeled with a very different way, not the mental disorder. He said the mental affliction. Now they make you mental disorder. They label you, they make you as a, you're not healthy at all. So why am I saying is that that's why now they are bringing a lot of the different meditation in the market. So that's why one time I was interviewed in the Malaysia, one journalist asked me that, uh, Rinpoche, can you tell me a little bit about a mindfulness meditation? So I asked her, now I see there are the two mindfulness meditation. One is the Buddhist the mindfulness meditation. One is the market the mindfulness meditation. <laughs> you are talking about which one? So my point is that the love bring the lots of the meditation. Now the thing is that the one side is a very good. There are a lot of the different meditation. But the one important thing is a meditation is like a medicine. Whoever gives you should be very aware of the it can bring the results. It is a meditation is not like a vitamin. It is not a supplementary summer meditation. It's a real meditation. It should help the people who practice it. Because you are investing your time. Every day, 10 minutes. Mean that every day, 10 minutes means that one month you are invested around 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 30, so how many? 300 minutes, isn't it? 300 minutes you are investing your time. So that's why now come back to the, your question. Consciousness going out of the body and the outer coming and the meditating emptiness, I will tell this is the not a right meditation. This is the not a right meditation because why I'm saying is that the, this meditation drones comes into the consciousness transfer in meditation. This meditation will not come in the emptiness meditation. You can meditate like that. But what do you call for that meditation? What is the purpose of the, that meditation? What kind of benefit you will get from the, that meditation? So every of the meditation, two things you should know. One is the first thing is the benefit. What kind of the benefit you will get? Second thing is that this meditation, what do you call that meditation and who had practiced it before? Because you have looked at all the matters and what you are having. They have been through the clinical trail. Am I right? So whatever these meditation, thousand years, a lot of the great master, they've been meditating it. So that means it's a very safe. So if you bring the new, new meditation, you, it is just like that you are bringing the medicine without any clinical trail, clinical experiment. So that's why, okay, so this meditation. Now the consciousness transfer, what I mentioned is the thousand years back that meditation called as a POA or consciousness transfer in meditation, okay? Thank you, now we'll have the 30 minute rest, okay? 30 minute rest, then we'll see you again, okay? 30 minutes will be too long or too short. <laughs> okay. 30 minutes means we'll be here exactly 11.45, okay? So as you know, Rimshay is very much on time. So I suggest people come here maybe a little five minutes earlier. What do you think? Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you in a half hour.
，终结了。
No. Okay, fine. No, I will get you on my hands. Yeah. Now, again, that uh, now we will come back to the third Narupa Yoga. Okay. The dream yoga, normally it will take the year to get the, some of the experience. And the consciousness transfer and power back to see if you're serious. Maybe we'll make the some program in the some other time next time. You have to spend at least six to eight hours per day for seven days. Then I have to be very near by you. Otherwise, if sometimes goes wrong, I will have to be the responsible. So I have to take the responsible. And I have to tell you what to meditate. When sometimes the, when you practice the consciousness transference, you might lo feel like a lose the energy. So I have to tell you what your diet you should change, what meditation you have to do. Or sometimes you might get vomit. Sometimes you might feel very tight. Sometimes you might feel like a very high taking the drugs. So I have to be very near by you. So that maybe we'll make the some other time, okay? Who are the interested, okay? Consciousness. Now the third Narupa Yoga, it comes the inner heat, okay? Meditation of the inner heat. This is the meditation of the inner heat. You have to be the very, 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 very cautious with it, okay? Why I'm saying the cautious is that the, because the inner heat meditation, this comes in the, especially many of the Research have done on this field. And uh, you may see the some of the meditators who meditate and that they generate the X from the body heat. Have you heard about it? And uh, this meditation, so one time when I was teaching with a student, I told that they are the around there are the seven steps under this meditation, inner heat meditation. I told the student who really are the interested. Meditate for the two, three weeks. Then what will I do is that I'll ask them to meditate. Then I will turn on the air con. Turn on the air con and uh, not only turning on the air con, two or three air con, okay? Air condition and the make the place is very cold. And the ancient tradition, not only they will meditate, they have to wear the very thin clothes. Some in the ancient tradition, semi, I mean, the, without any clothes, okay? But they the very thin clothes. But the more important thing is that the, in the ancient tradition, they will soak the cloth on the in the water. They will put that on you. If your inner heat meditation is, if you succeed or the, if you can do the inner heat meditation quite well, you can dry up that the, where, the soap the water, the cloth which is soaked into the cold water. Okay, so, so that is the inner heat meditation, okay? So I always tell the joke to the people. I tell that the inner heat meditation don't seem so fascinating to me. For me, inner cold meditation will seem so more fascinating. <laughs> then we don't need an air cone. Your condition when we travel. But the thing is that um, with the how the person, there are seven steps of the meditating, the inner heat meditation. I know exactly how to make the inner cool meditation. I know the, I mean, the quote, I can make like a step of the meditation to generate the extreme cold in the body. Way I got stuck is that the if something goes wrong with the, that meditation, I will be the responsible. So that's why the, I got stuck and I could not introduce that. So this is the inner heat meditation. 100% safe. Thousand years, lot of the meditator practice and practicing. There's no complaint of the, it bring the damage in the body. Inner cold meditation, I can invent it. I know the, how they make the inner heat, heat meditation, how it generates the heat in the, our, the energy point, you know, the chakras, no? Same the, that the pattern with I'm using it, I can generate the, some meditation to bring the inner cold. But I was stuck and I was so scared that it might damage the other's body. 
So that's why the point is that's okay. Now the inner heat meditation. So they are the seven steps. And the main, the point of the inner heat meditation, uh, theoretically, I will explain that inner heat generally, you first thing is that you have to understand that the, in our body, they are the five chakras, no? Five energy points, okay? Five energy points we call the ch uh, chakras, no? Five energy point. Five energy point and the inner heat meditation. If, okay, first let me start like that, okay? Groan, we call the one chakra energy point, throat, heart, navel, and the private part. They are the five chakras and the five energy point. Inner heat meditation, the systems, energy heritage, mainly you have to focus on your, uh, comes from belly and navel part, okay? Navel part. So that's why before that, I will introduce the one of the basic, okay, basic practice of the inner, uh, inner heat meditation. Basic, okay. That itself, you can see that the, it will help you to generate the, some sorts of the heats in your body, okay. But it is very useless in this hot weather, no, to generate. <laughs> very useless, there's no use anyway. I'm not so sure, Sacramento, in the winter time, it gets cold, so what? Huh? Little cold, okay. <laughs> and this practice, enough. anyway, so let me show you the, some basic points, okay? Basic point, what you have to do is like that, okay? So can you see me? See, no? And uh, what you do is uh, keep your body very straight like this, okay? Very straight, and... Uh, Hand position, you have to do like this, okay? Hmm? This, can you see that, no? And, uh, and uh, keep it like this and keep on your lap. Then when you press the right nostril, okay? Press the right nostril, inhale as much as you can. When you are wearing the mask, it might be very difficult, okay? Anyway, so you can remove the mask if you want, okay? Press the right nostril, inhale. Then you press the left nostril, inhale. Then the from the both nostril, inhale or exhale. Okay, clear, no? There is a three steps. In the that one session, there will be three steps. Inhale, exhale, and the from the both nostril, inhale or exhale. Three steps, no? That one round have the three step and the, you have do this three times, this round, do this round for the three times, okay? Or one time or three times. Each of the round you have a three steps to follow. For first point, okay? Now the second point, the most important, what you have to do, so you are to inhale the breath. Inhale the breath and the one you inhale the breath, then you hold the breath, okay? Hold the breath as, um, as much as you can hold the breath. Then you release the breath out of the, your mouth, okay? From your mouth. When most important in this practice, when you inhale the breath, visualize and the focus on your breath, okay? Breath or the air which going in your body, okay? In your belly, your body, or try to feel that, okay? Going in the belly and the hold the breath in your belly as much as you can, okay? Once you could not, then release the air or breath out of the, your mouth. Am I clear? And the very interesting thing is that the, they have a scientific research. You can look in the Google, okay? Inhaling from the nose and exhaling from the breath from the mouth, it helped to increase the lifespan. You can search that in Google yourself. This meditation, two thousands years back, this is they are doing it. So they on the one thing, inhale, and when you exhale, exhale from the mouth all the time. Okay, but the, some master might tells you that the, should not breathe out from the mouth. They are the two different tradition. Okay, what I'm following the my tradition that come from the my grandpas and the like this tradition. Always to exhale the breath from the mouth out. 
scientific research saying that inhaling from the nose, exhaling from out of the mouth, it helps to increase the lifespan. Are you getting my point? So tradition might be different, okay? So, but the, whatever you choose, you choose the fix on the one will better. If you inhale, exhale from the mouth, keep on exhaling from the mouth. If you inhale the from nose and the exhale from the nose, then do that all the time. Don't switch over here, there, okay? Then you will get more confused. You know, are you getting my point? Okay, so that is okay. So then hold the breath, okay? When you're holding the breath, you know that, that the holding the breath itself, itself brings, itself will create the more positive energy in your body. How can I prove it? Okay, oh yeah, oh sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I missed the one. Okay, inhaling and the holding the breath in your body itself generates lots of positive energy in your body. How can I prove it? Very simple way, okay? Very simple way. Things like that, okay? Very simple way. Okay, that is a one time. I don't know how to show you around that. Okay. Let me tell you one thing. Okay. Do you... Okay. To prove that, first let me... Okay. Do like that. Okay, just one second. That you can take it as an experiment. Okay, experiment. Okay. So experiment is like that. What you have to do is that, okay? Uh, when you are having a, okay, experiment is true like that. When you meditate, when you're meditating, okay? When you are meditating, very simple way, do you, in your home, do you have that uh, some Normally, they call that the response, that meter, which detect the electric wave, no? Some electrician have that meter, no? Well, thermometer is not, not a thermometer. Your wave that can detect the electric waves, no? I don't know. What do you call that? Hmm? Some response, bioresponse meter, or what do you... They have, because the why I'm saying is that the, the one in the university in Taiwan, university, what they did is that I was meditating and that they put the water front of the me. Water front of the me and the, what they did is that they put that measuring the electric waves in the water. That it goes, first it shows around the 10 or like that. When I meditate, it went up till the 30. They just put that in the water front of the me. First, it was comes up to showing the, that shows the uh, tan or something like that, the electrical wave, no? I will find the word for that. Normally, all the electricians, or they carry with it, no? Okay, I don't show on the tan. So while I'm meditating, it reach up till the 30. 30. But the very interesting, very amazing, very shocking thing is that the, my student, he meditate and the it reach up till 300. <laughs> they expected me the better than my student, but it comes something very strange. Student meditate and the it comes much better than me. I was also asking you what you meditate. <laughs> so, <laughs> So they just keep the water in front of the being. Okay, they put that in the water and I have to meditate in front of the water. So see that the, how can I can effect on the water and the bring that electrical wave, no? So anyway, so what I'm saying is that uh, what I'm saying is when you inhale the breath, hold the breath. Okay, while you're holding the breath, if you have that meter, then you see that put the front of the water and uh, see that the, how it affecting it. This is the one thing, okay? Second thing is that the, when you... Inhale and the hold the breath. When you hold the breath and the, what you have to do, you must focus the whole, your focus should be on your belly, okay? Because in that, when you hold in the breath, the, the, the energy started to move, okay? When your energy started to move and the, that movement, what you can do is a one thing, okay? Hold the breath, hold the breath, 
and the, you can transfer, try to transfer the, your energy from your palm. When you are transferring the, your energy from the palm, you visualize the white or light, okay, warm light, warm light coming in the positive form and the coming out from the, your hand and the goes to the person whom you are praying. Or you can try on the flower like this, okay? Things that, the, okay, energy is coming out from the, your hands and the moving towards the flower, okay? Does it make sense? That is a very easy, you can do the experiment for the one week. See that what make the difference on the flower. Just get the two flower, okay? One flower, every morning you transfer the, your positive energy. One flower, you do nothing. Just fetch the same amount of the water, put the flower in the same place, same amount of the water. One, you are just transferring the positive energy. Okay, then see after one week, what make the difference? Am I clear? Okay, so this is the basic. Okay, you can try with this. This is the basic, okay? So at least if you can hold your breath at least for the 20 to 30 seconds, then we have to go for the seven steps of the inner heat meditation. That is the seven step which there, it will, in this meditation. So in the seven steps of the inner heat meditation is mainly to generate the more inner heat, I mean, the heats in your body, okay? If you are the very serious, maybe some other time we'll make it, okay? At least this will take for the two weeks, okay? See the sum of the progress in the generating the heats in your body, okay? If you are serious, as I told you, no? Then after the two weeks later, then I will turn on the very strong air cone and uh, put the wet cloth on your body and uh, see whether you can dry it up, okay? <laughs> Okay, this is the ancient tradition. They used to do that, yeah. So otherwise that everyone can claim that, oh, they succeeded the inner heat meditation, no? So yeah, that is the, okay, we are talking about, this is what third one, isn't it? Third one, six Narupa Yoga, no? Inner heat, okay. Now the fourth one is called the intimate state, okay? Intimate state, intimate, no? Intimate state, normally it's called the pardo, no? Intermediate state theory, I think you have heard about it, no? When the person die, they will live the 49 days in that intermediate state, then they will take the rebirth, no? Have you heard that, no? It's a very common, no? But the one thing is that the, how many days do we live in that state? Normally it's say the 49 days. We live in 49 days, then we'll take the rebirth. That is the, what it mentioned in the tax, 49 days, okay? But the, here, the one thing is a very much of the, I mean, the interesting point is that there is a one book. Have you heard that book? It is a book is done the research, especially with the children who remember their previous life. The book name it says is the book called The Children Who Remember Their Previous Life. Have you heard that book? Okay, its book was written by, the, I think, Ian Stevenson. He was, uh, he was a professor in the University of Virginia or somewhere. He passed away. But he wrote the book and he interviewed lots of the kids who remember their previous life, okay? I'm also one of it, okay? But now I don't remember, okay? No, don't ask me that what I remember, okay? Don't ask me that question. <laughs> then it's out of the topic, okay? So now the thing is that in that book, one few things are so much of the, it, it is so much of the, my, uh, pull the, my attention in the one point. Some kids who remember the, their previous life is that they died eight years back, 10 years back. So that means that they live in the intermediate state more than the 49 days. Does it make sense? So from the, this point, the, from Buddhist perspective, it is very, very much we need a more proper research on that field. Because from Buddhist perspective, we are saying that the, we live in 49 days. But the children who remember their past life, they mentioned that their past life was died. When they remember, they explain about their past life. If they died the 10 years before their birth. 
That means they live more than the eight years in that intermediate state. So how is that possible? If you, you just, if you read that book, some of the kids, when they're explained about their past life, no? So this is the intermediate state. Normally it says that we live in 49 days. But this is the one just, some point just want to share with you. Now the important point of the, that intermediate state is that what the experience, what you will have the experience in that state. What happens in that 49 days? So there is a one documentary. It's in the Italian language. It's, it's about the death. So it's a very interesting, it, that documentary is a regarding about the different religious people, how their perspective toward the death. Uh, documentary was made by the one of the Italian famous, I mean, the singer and the director. Any Italian here? Yeah, no, his, his name is a Franco Padito, okay? With the Buddhist perspective, he came to me, so you will see me in that documentary, okay? But mostly it in the Italian language. So, so thing is that the, how we look at the death. So how we look at the death, the intermediate state, no? So once you're born in that intermediate state, what you have to do, what will you will see, what you will see and what you will experience. So in this practice of the intermediate state, it teaches you, it is like a guidebook. When you're born in that intermediate state, what you have to do. When you're born in the such a state, you cannot use the Google. Google will become the useless. So now who will guide you? So that the thing. So that is the called the intermediate, I mean, the, the Pardo state, okay? So that will teach on that, the Pardo state, okay? Pardo state. So that is the fit, isn't it? I'm the fourth or what? Huh? F fourth, no? Okay, the fourth, okay? Fourth of the, that, uh, it's a Narupa Yoga, okay? Now things goes like that, okay? Let me explain a little bit about that state. First thing is that the person after the death, when they're born in that intermediate state, first thing is uh, what will happen is that they will get very shocked, very disappointed when they realize they are died. They will get in the one interesting thing is that the, I think that you, you can do the search in the Google. Some of the Berlin scientists did the one research. Research is a very interesting. What they did is that uh, they clinically they introduced the death. They introduced the death means uh, they killed the the volunteers for the participant for the research, they kill for the some hours, then they bring it back for the life. So the moment that after when they die, they killed, they ask their the experience how they feel. So there's a very interesting research. You can search in the Google. You can find the Berlin scientist, okay? Finds the life after the death, something like that. So the research, the process is that the, they introduce the death. They kill for the certain time, then again, they bring it back to the life. Then they ask that they are experienced. Their experience are very interesting that someone sees the light and that this, they hear that they are experienced. Even if you, some maybe the near death experience, no, you have heard about that, no? Near death experience, they were having the near death experience. Now, this is the, not a near death experience, it is experience after the death. Experience after the death is that the person, when they will get very shocked, when they realized they are the died, they could not accept it. After they realized that they are died, then they will get feel like a very lost way to go. So that moment that then they and in that the guy uh, in that practice it teaches that you have to follow the lights, bright lights. What kind of the lights comes in the every week? They will explain it about it. Because these all lights are not coming something from outside. It is more like a, your own, the, I mean, the perception, so the, your own, I mean, the, it is like a coming something. It is not from the coming something 
from external, it is more like a, you are having that kind of the vision, I should say the vision of the different kinds of the lights. So it teaches us that the, you have to follow the, these lights, different colors of the light, bright lights. And the, even the, in that state, you will have the vision of the different Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. So you should not, in this practice, it teaches of the, you should not get the scared of the, these Buddhas, what you see is, no? But the, here, the one question comes that these all Buddhas, are just, you will see from the, your own vision. Why you are seeing all these Buddhas from the, your own vision is that the, because the, have you heard about all the five aggregates? Because the, the, our five aggregate is getting the transform into the five different Buddhas. Does it make any sense or this get a little bit more complicated? Okay, anyway, so this is the, okay, the point, the reason what he's saying, okay? So this is the, okay, the practice of the Pardo, no? So practice of the intermediate state, okay? So, okay, this is the four. Now the fifth is a call that the, uh, practice of the illusionary body, okay? Illusionary body. So today I will conclude with the explaining the fifth one, okay? I will leave this fifth. Normally in the Tibetan tradition, five we consider as a lucky number. So <laughs> I don't explain about the five of the six Narupa Yogas, okay? The fifth is a illusionary body. The illusionary body is a illusionary body. It's, it is, means that the illusionary body means Right now, we are having this, the physical body, no? Physical body. In the, when you are the practitioners, when the practitioners reach at a certain state, they can have the different body. Different body, what you, we used to call as the illusionary body. Different body, that kind's like an illusionary body. When normally, when the people die, they will take the rebirth as the pardo. They will have the pardo or intermediate state and that they will have a different body in that state. When the practitioner reach the certain the realization, they can have the body called the illusionary body. Illusionary body is a just like a rainbow body. Rainbow body. So that's why, now think, okay, let me get you the very simple way, let me ask you the one question. Do you know the Manjushri Buddha, no? Compassion Buddha, sorry, not the Compassion, Wisdom Buddha. Manjushri Buddha holding the sword in his hand, am I right? Will he feel a pain holding the sword in his hand 24 hours? Are you getting my question? If you see the some deity, they ride a horse. Have you seen the deity riding the horse? No. Will the horse get tired? Are you getting my question? So Manjushri Buddha holding the sword. The sword in the if you keep on holding that sword, will he feel the hand pain? These all questions. Oh, now, what's your answer? So, now, now comes to the point that the you know physical body and the, what's his body? Illusionary body. Yeah, that's come to the illusionary body and the rainbow body. There's a different terms we call the rainbow body. Rainbow body is as when you see the rainbow, you should be on the very right position. If you are in not a right position, you won't see the rainbow. When you are in the right position, you will see the rainbow. Same thing when you look at the, all these Buddhas, they are having the illusionary body or rainbow body. So that's why the, you are seeing like a carrying the sword. That is a, not a sword made with the iron. That is not a such a body like our body, physical body. It's we call the rainbow body. Illusionary body, okay? Illusionary body, what you call, what we call in the term illusionary body. So when you see like a protector riding the horse, that horse is also the form of the, that horse is like a illusionary body. So that's why the, there's a term called the whole, what gram? 
hologram, isn't it? Yeah, it is semi sorts of like that. Okay, semi hologram. Okay, so that why so that is the why. Now the comes in the question is that what that is it possible to us achieve like that body? Yes, very possible. Now right now we are having the physical body. Then we are having the second label. We'll have the energy body, dream body, illusionary body. Now let me prove that the, how we are having the energy body. Have you heard about the aura? Can you see the, your own aura? Yeah, we can see it. How we can see? Maybe, maybe I think that someone have to stand on the wall. Okay, maybe I don't know whether it works here. At least we can try it, okay? In the outside, maybe we'll try, okay, later. To try to show you that how you can see the, our energy body. Energy body means like an aura, okay? So that's why if you look at the Buddha's picture, Buddha's, you can see the lights, no? It is representing the his, the aura, or the energy body. So that's why the first we're having the physical body, then we're having the energy body, then we'll have the dream body, then later we can achieve that the illusionary body, that is illusionary body. Once you, once your energy body, let me go the more deeper of the, these bodies, okay? Like an energy body. Actually, what does the energy body means is that, energy body is a means that sometimes the, if you look at the, our sickness, no physical illness, what you call some kinds of the sickness, even you keep the very healthy lifestyle, eat the very healthy food. Even if you do the regular exercise, sometimes you will get the disease that the very unexpected way. Because it will affect your energy body. First, it will affect your energy body. Then it will come to your physical body, affecting your. So that's why the later on, I will show you the, how you look in your body aura, okay? So aura, maybe outside we can try. Remind me, okay? Otherwise I will forget because I'm getting very old now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, so okay. So now the illusion, the fifth uh, Narupa Yoga, it talks about the illusionary body, achieving the illusionary body or the dream, like a rainbow body. So with that body, what happened is that the, our lifespan will be increased. With this physical body, our lifespan is a very much depends on the duration of the, this physical body. When you when we can achieve the illusionary body or the dream body, our lifespan will be increased and the, we will have the more time to practice the Dharma. So that is the idea of the uh, practice of the illusionary body. Okay, number one. Number two is that the have you again the have you seen that movie called the avatar no have you heard about that movie again uh, someone said, told me that movie is a similarity about that illusionary body and the, some, uh, i could not watch that movie only the few minutes okay so yeah so illusionary body when the person certain of the the meditator when they achieve the illusionary body that meditator used to have the two body one physical body and the one, the illusionary body. Sometimes he can use this physical body. Sometimes he can use the illusionary body. In that movie, do they use like that or what? The person use the two kind of the body or? Hmm? Oh, okay, but I have, I could not watch that movie. Okay, only a few minutes and uh, really seems a little bit of the boring for me. <laughs> Yeah. So okay. So, but the, someone told me that's a similarity that the idea is like an illusionary body. But the main concept of the, that illusionary body means that when the meditator when they achieve that the illusionary body, the his consciousness can reside in the, this physical body or in that illusionary body, so he can change his body. Okay, does it? Looks a little bit more like a fantasize. <laughs> okay, that is the theory. Okay, well, the theory is okay. The idea is okay. The theory is, the idea is that okay. 
So one thing here thing is a very important thing is a one thing. What we can do is that, that before understanding this whole body, first let when we introduce that the physical body, we everyone knows the physical body. Easier to know is that then the second step we will introduce that the energy body, then the dream body, then the illusionary body. The energy body, as I told you, I'll show you that how look at the, that. Okay, maybe we can try once. I, that was not in outside. Maybe I might forget. Can you someone stand on the, that wall? Can you stand? Okay. Okay. And uh, maybe we'll try. Okay. Now what you have to do is that uh, can you just focus one feet, maybe half feet above of the his head, okay? Half feet above of the his head. Just focus on that half feet above of the his head. And the sight of the his body, can you see some of the whitish or white ray? Can you see? Can you raise your arm? Who can see that? Good. Good. Can you see that? Okay, good. Now you can sit down. Now my question, okay. Now my question is good that the, with this white ray, how far from the his body? Two centimeters, okay. Like this much, isn't it? Okay, normally four or five centimeters. Huh? Actually, the Buddhas, they used to say that the Buddhas, this white ray is a uh, three feet away. That means he having the very strong energy body. So now, now the, what you can do is so today what you saw only the few centimeters, no? Now, after he practiced the meditation, 10 or 20 minutes, if you come back, there are the six to the 70 person, that aura will get changed. The white ray will be more brighter. Does it make a sense? You can try in your home, okay? Ask some of the, your friends or family members, look at the, your aura. Then after the meditation, ask them again to check, okay? Okay, are you, get, are you getting my point? You can check, okay? If, it is a, if there is a changes, very good, okay? If there is a no changes, you have to meditate more hard, okay? <laughs> And means okay, you have to okay. So, so now that comes uh, that is the physical body, energy body, energy body. Then comes the dream body. Then comes the illusionary body. Dream body is as I mentioned before at the state of the dream traveling. When you can travel, you have to travel with the body. That's what we call the dream body. Then the after the high, then when you have the practice and the realizations and again, the then it comes the illusionary body. Illusionary body is, a, it's not like a dream body. That is a such a body that you can use like a, your car anytime, whenever you want. Dream body, you can use only at the state of the dream. Illusionary body, when you achieve that, you can use that anytime when you want to use that body. Okay, am I clear about that? Okay, so maybe now the... I will stop here and I will leave for the 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes for the uh, question answer sessions. Okay. Question answer sessions and the, okay. So now the, I will make the conclusion. Okay. Few minutes for the conclusion of the, my, that's all the points. Okay. So today we had the session of the six Narupa Yogas and I finish only the five. Okay. Five is an auspicious number. So I will give you the five. Okay. Five and the, what I left is uh, left of the clear light, okay? Practice of the clear light consciousness, okay? That maybe we'll do some other time or maybe we'll do that in the next time, okay? Okay, we'll let this, okay. Now the five points, among the five points that the uh, most important thing is uh, what I told you today. What I told you today is that if you have the notes and the like that, you just remember, and uh, I, what I introduced, the uh, some of the meditation, you can keep on and uh, try with it uh, the, some few minutes for the one or two, three weeks, okay? If you see the some benefits, you can go and carry with it. If you don't see that much benefit, you can leave that, okay? So that's, I just want to tell you that. And uh, thank you very much, okay? And uh, really, I had a very nice time with you.
this morning and I had a very nice time. And uh, now I leave for the questions and the answer session. So it will have that uh, to clarify that uh, if any doubts in your mind, okay? Okay, so I will leave for the at 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes for the question, 15 to 20 minutes for the question answer session. Okay, go on, yeah. So you said that um, you remembered your former reincarnation uh, before your present self. Do you ever dream of where you're going next? Okay. Did I dream of going to the next? Huh? Okay. Okay. Now the if you, your question is, uh, did I dream of going to the next, isn't it? So if you mean by the did I dream by the going to the next life, I will say no. Because I don't want to take a rebirth. Because there is a story in the Tibetan. One person came to the one great master place and the person told that great master, I don't want to die. Can you please? Teach me the method. Is there any method that I don't have to die? Master, that, that was a great master, and told him that, the, yeah, there's only one way. There's only one way. If you follow that, then you won't die. So the, he was so happy and asked the master that what I have to do to not to die. So the master told him, you should not born. You should not born and then you will not die. Now, the same thing in this question, did I dream to go to the next life? So I told I don't want to take the rebirth. To take the rebirth, I have to die. So I don't want to die. <laughs> so, 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 okay. So I never dream about the taking the next life, okay? And the second thing is that, uh, I mean, the couple of the years, I mean, the last, last visit, my last visit, that is a couple of the years back, and uh, I established in America that called the Institute, Dipkar Vajrayana Institute. When I was establishing that, one of the students asked me the question, oh, Rinpoche, will you rebirth again as the ninth council Rinpoche to carry on the, this our organization activity and the war, carry on? Yeah, so I told him, yes, definitely I will report and carry on the, my activities. So when you're asking me about the did I had the dream of the taking the next rebirth, I never had the, any like that dream. So, yeah, okay. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, for the meditation on the central channel, how big do you visualize the central channel? Hmm? Okay. And, and what color are the other two channels? Hmm? Okay. Okay, when you're asking the how big, three feet, three inch, three centimeter. I'm just kidding, okay, joking. <laughs> <laughs> then it makes your meditation very difficult. How can you measure your imagination with the three feet and the three inch and the three centimeter? <laughs> so, and the how big, okay, just you visualize that you are inside of the, that center channel. Central channel color should be the white, okay? White, and you just visualize. Even the, if you visualize the biggest of this house, also fine, okay? So if I tell you the only three feet, then it makes you the very difficult to meditate. No, whenever you meditate, the question will come that the, whether you are visualizing that the bigger than the three feet or not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, thank you, Rinpoche. When I meditate, I sweat and I get very hot. Is that the same thing as the inner fire or is that something else? Okay. Can you repeat the question? What, what? Is that the inner fire that you were talking about or is that something else happening? The inner heat, no? Okay, 
Inner heat meditation that uh, what you have to meditate in the inner heat, there are the seven steps, okay? Seven steps and uh, that may be, it may take some time and I will make some other time, okay? About that, the seven step of the meditation, inner heat. There are the seven steps. And uh, after you meditate for these seven steps, then we will see that uh, how you can generate the inner heat in your body, okay? And um, one thing is that uh, I always tell you know, these yogas and the, these practices, okay? I practiced that the consciousness transference, I practiced. Inner heat meditation that uh, I practiced before. But the dream yoga, I didn't practice. I, as I mentioned before, I never practiced that before. And the uh, inner heat meditation, I practice, and uh, it seems like a certain... Yeah, a certain, I mean, the certain points that I feel like, uh, yeah, it creates uh, some of the heats in my body. But I never been to, but I never been to such a test like a sitting under the air cone that I have not did that. Yeah. So the seven, there are the seven steps with the practicing the inner heat that I will explain the some other time. Okay. It is, again, it is, these are seven point normally, traditionally, whenever, Master, they introduce the seven steps. You have to immediately, you have to practice it. So that's a word very, you are, if you are really very serious to practice, definitely we'll make the some other time, okay? So with the seven steps of the inner heat meditations, okay? So practice it, and if you get success, then you can practice, and once you get success, and when you can meditate and generate the heat, even when you live very in the cold area, then you have to take the pictures and post that on the Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Rinpoche, do you have time for another question? Yeah, okay, sure. Hey, when I listen to you, mm -hmm. sometimes I get a little bit confused about what is literal and what is can be symbolic. Because like I, I, I look to the statue of Buddha and I know that's a representation, a reminder of the Buddha is a symbolic. Mm -hmm. I see the picture of the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. there, and I know that's that's a picture of his physical body, and he's sitting somewhere, mm -hmm. and I can go and see him, and, mm -hmm. and that's how he looks like. So, but when we when we train our mind, it's very confused for me. I, I understand visualization where I have to project use my imagination to project thing, something to induce to meditation. But sometimes all the information you give, sometimes I get lost what is literal and what is symbolic. Okay. No, things like that, okay? I used to tell the people that, look at the Manjushri Buddha, Vishnu Buddha. He holds a sword in his hand. Am I right? Now, today, if you had the, if you see the wisdom Buddha in real, if you had the visualizations or the, if you see the wisdom Buddha, if you had the visions or the, if you see the wisdom Buddha today, I don't think he is carrying a sword. I think in his hand, he might have the iPhone. Carrying the sword in the 2000 years, he is not carrying the sword. He, he might change. So this is the one very important point here you should understand. This is a great master, Lama Tsongkhapa. He is having the direct visualization of the Manjushri Buddha. He is master having the direct visualization of Manjushri Buddha. Both of them are communicating with the Manjushri Buddha. Things is that the, what the Lama Tsongkhapa, when he sees the Manjushri Buddha, Manjushri Buddha is very serious. Whatever he asks the question, only he gives the answer. But the, his master, when he is having the direct visualization of the Manjushri Buddha, that Manjushri Buddha is very talkative, throws the jokes. If it's the same Manjushri Buddha, how come it be the two different personalities? So when you are seeing the Buddhas, Buddha appears according to the, your energy and the body elements or the, that label it comes. 
It does not mean that the Manjushiri Buddha, maybe I might see the Manjushiri Buddha holding the iPhone. Maybe when you see the Manjushiri Buddha, he might hold the iPad. That is a very possible, okay? When you are seeing this statue, this statue mostly made in the Nepal. I'm from Nepal. These statue make a, their own imagination. They make like this Buddhas and this statue, no? So this is just a simple, very simple. When you go in the very deeper label, the Buddha, when you see it, it won't be the same as that. Now, I always tell the people the one thing. Today, if you see the Buddha, today, if you had the direct visualization of the Buddha, what question you will ask for the Buddha? What question? Do you have any question to ask the Buddha? If you have no question to ask the Buddha, I will tell you what should you ask. You should ask the super lotto number which is going to win. I'm very serious on this point, okay? Really, if I may see the Buddha, definitely I will this question. If you can answer me correctly, then I will win the prize. If you cannot answer the properly, then what I see is another Buddha. He is not omniscient at all. When you are seeing the direct visualization, how you will know that you are have not having the hallucination? When the Lama Tsongkhapa, when you see the Manjushiri Buddha, how can we prove that is a right visualization, not a hallucination? Because reason is that the, when the Lama Tsongkhapa having the discussion with the Manjushiri Buddha, Manjushiri Buddha explain about the emptiness practices, a lot of the give give advices. Then the Lama Tsongkhapa said the one thing, I don't understand what you are saying. So then the Manjushiri Buddha told the Lama Tsongkhapa, make the notes and the write down the every points what I'm telling you. When the right times comes, you will understand. When you are having the hallucination of the Buddha, they will tell you exactly what you know. They will tell you exactly what you want to hear. That's a hallucination. So that's why the, when you see the Buddha, ask the super lotus number. And the sheer, don't share with the, anyone except me. Okay? <laughs> and also, you can share the prize. No? So that is how I used to tell my students, okay? Because that then when the Buddha give, can give you the right number of the super lotto, then he's an omniscient. There's a very nice Japanese the Zen story. One student used to tell the, the master that he see the ghost. Ghost comes here and the ghost tells his private lifestyles and the, his all the secrets and the, what he steal the money and everything the, the ghost used to tell him. Then the master told him the one thing. Now next time when the ghost come, just put your hand in the grain. Just pull out your hand and the, uh, pull the grain in grain. How do you say that? Hmm? Maybe I'll speak to pattern, okay? <laughs> put your hand in the grain and the pull out with the full of the handful of the grain, isn't it? Pull out the handful of the grain, then ask the ghost how many there are the piece of the grain in his set. And in the, your hand. So then the next time the ghost appear, he did exactly what the master said. He put the hand in the grain, pull out the hand out a handful of the grain. Then he asked the ghost how many pieces of the grain in his hand. Then the ghost disappear. That is the hallucination. The, what you're seeing is the actual hallucination. So that's why the direct visualization. So that's why the what I'm saying is the direct visualizations of the that. So now the symbolic, no? When you look at the Buddha statue, these are the very simple. These are the drawing made on the base of the masters that one of the master who saw the Manjushri Buddha holding the sword. So he started to draw the, his experience. That master who saw them holding the Manjushri Buddha, the sword, might be he liked the sword. I don't know, maybe. So that's why you will see that in the Avalokiteshwara, Compassion Buddha, hundreds of the different of the Avalokiteshwara, Compassion Buddha. Because different master, when they are having the different visualizations of the compassion Buddha, different form. Who knows when you had the direct visualization of the Buddha might be holding the iPhone, iPad, then you can draw Buddha with holding the iPad, okay? That is the how the symbolics comes. Am I clear? 
So yeah, that is okay. Now yeah, any questions? Okay. Huh? Dirk, um, we see that you have a question and you can ask it now. Uh, thank you very much, Rinpoche. I'm, I'm 3,000 miles away, so uh, I, thank you for your talk. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yes, okay. yeah. uh, I, I wanted to know, is the purpose of dream yoga to just travel around and see things? Yes. Dream yoga purpose the dream yoga is uh, traveling around without paying the air ticket. <laughs> so <laughs> this time the air ticket is quite expensive. <laughs> okay, so just okay. The purpose is as I mentioned, the dream yoga to travel to the Buddha's the pure land to receive the teaching from the Buddha. So that is the one purpose. And the second purpose of the dream yoga is that that uh, in the state of the dream. You can meditate and uh, see the all the phenomena and the existence as the dream and the true nature of the empty, true nature. That is the second purpose of the practice of the dream yoga, okay? Every of the practice, every of the meditation, I told you before, it's uh, important to understand the purpose. Yeah, that is the second purpose to help you to understand or to realize the emptiness better or easier. Okay, then other questions, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you, Rinpoche. Um, my question is about the Bardo state. So you said that uh, the five aggregates will transform into uh, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas when we pass away and we're in the Bardo state. And you said that we can see them, right? But how do we see if one of our aggregates has turned into the Buddha and we're in the Bardo state? No, I didn't get your later later point. So how do we see the Buddhas if we don't have uh, eyes anymore? Okay. When you have to see something, do you need an eye? <laughs> <Come> <laughs> Okay, okay, things like that, okay. In the state of the dream, do you see? Actually, that time, the, your eye consciousness is not functioning. Yeah, but still you can see, you can hear things, no? And, uh, okay, that is the one thing. More interesting thing is that uh, when you fall asleep, when you're thinking that before falling asleep, you have to get up tomorrow morning at the 5 a.m. Then the without alarm, you can wake up at the F5, no? Exactly, you know the time without looking at the watch. So these all the, in the state of the pardo, now come back to the state of the pardo, when you're saying the I. We don't, that state of, okay, now we have to understand the pardo body. I told you the physical body, energy body, body than the dream body. No? Parto, in the state of the Parto, these Parto have the body, that body have the eye consciousness. Not like our physical eye, still they have the five consciousness. Eye consciousness, ear, and they can hear. Yeah, they can hear. So they have the consciousness, eye consciousness, they can see. They can see, but the, now here the come one question. Can they talk? If they talk, what language they talk? Okay, you got it. One Italian died and born in the Pardo. One Indian died and born in the Pardo. One British died and born in the Pardo. These three people, they, can they communicate each other? If they communicate each other, what language they speak? <laughs> because these are, you have to understand in the state of the Pardo, they don't need a language. What they call the telecompathy, no? Mental communication. So that is the one, how they do that. So that's why even they can see they have the eye consciousness, but not like the our physical eye consciousness. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now we leave the yeah, one last question. Okay, if you have. Mm. If they know, then we'll yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Rinpoche, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, is inner heat considered to be the foundation of the six yogas? And if so, why is that? Sorry. Can you repeat your question? Is inner heat considered to be the foundation of the six yogas? And if so, why? Which the foundation? Oh, I see, see, see. Okay. Okay. Inner heat is a, not a foundation of the six Narupa yogas. Okay. It is not a foundation. Every practice, every Dharma practice, let me tell you the what is a foundation. Foundation of the every Dharma practice is mentally living happily. When you can live happily, then you can practice the Dharma well. Don't think that the practicing Dharma is a for to leave you half happily, okay? For leave the happily, you don't need the Dharma practice. Mentally, when you are leaving the happily, that is the foundation of the Dharma practice, okay? So how to live happily, that's a tomorrow topic. But the tomorrow's topic that I'll talk tomorrow, that is the most important, okay? But the simple way, uh, let me tell you one thing. When you think that uh, you want the happiness, you want to live happily, you want, when you desire for the happiness, when you think that uh, you should have the happy life, what does that show you? That means when you desire for the happiness, when you wish for the happiness, that shows that at the current moment you are not happy. When you are pursuing the happiness, what does that mean? You are not happy. So that's why the this tomorrow topic, okay? So that is a foundation of the old Dharma practice. Foundation for our the life, okay? Yeah, I always tell that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Huh? Thank you, Ramsha. So uh, tomorrow, we'll start at 11, like regular service, and then uh, there'll be uh, initiation to Vajrapani, Chana Doji. Chana Doji's picture, the tanka is the applique tanka in the corner. Japani protects the tantras. So as my close students know, every Sunday that I'm here, I also lead uh, the yogas and the salang practices at three o'clock. And I've decided to open that up. So uh, we, those uh, who want to come can come to that, you know, so we can continue the practice and we're also doing it online. Three o'clock. Yeah. So I encourage people also tomorrow, like, you know, get up early and do some shamatha vipassana too, right? <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.